So what comes to mind when you think of civilizations? Well, some things that could come up is maybe the Romans, maybe the ancient uh, Egyptians, Mesopotamians, even the Mayans. There's a lot of people you could think of. But did you think of Robloxians? Yeah, I'm proposing that a society in the Roblox community is actually possibly its own civilization. And I'm here to prove it using the Google machine, of course. So the game that I'm actually speaking of is called Trade Lands, and I believe that it's a unique combination of its community, the gameplay, and its roleplay makes it into what I would consider to be a civilization or a virtual civilization, if you want to think of it that way. Let's go ahead and get started. Whenever you search up a civilization on Google, a ton of different things pop up and the requirements do vary. There is no real direct um, set requirements to become a civilization, at least that I could tell. So I went ahead and took the first result and decided to make that our list of requirements. Let's go through them really quickly. We have to have a food supply, a social structure, a system of government, a religious system, highly developed culture, advancements in technology, and finally a written language. This is quite a list to fill out, but I believe that the game that I am thinking of and its society is able to completely match all of these requirements. Um, well, uh, I, I, I kind of have to exclude religious system here. Sadly, since religion is not usually discussed in online gaming communities, we won't be able to use it here and it will not be applicable for fulfilling that role. Though, hey, it's a list we found on Google. You guys can't really, really you can't trust the internet. And by the way, make sure to hit that like button and you will be guaranteed to get millions and millions of Robux. I promise you that it will be epic and you will be rich and famous forever if you hit that like button because I'm a trustable source on the internet. The gameplay of Trade Lands is surprisingly simple. You play as a character that joins a faction of your choice where you will build a ship and trade cargo to varying islands around the map and make money. With this money, you can then purchase improved ships with better guns, defense, cargo space, all of the stuff. Um, of course, you're going to also need materials which can be collected on all of the islands and you will also need levels which can be gained by trading cargo. Now materials are also used to craft other things like furniture or tools and especially weapons. Weapons are very important as items to defend yourself against the other players on the map of different factions, especially pirates, where you can get your cargo completely stolen from you and your life ended. Players on ships man either the helm of a ship or they can man a cannon, meaning it is better for you to play with more than one person. Playing alone is much more risky as you are much more vulnerable to being attacked by other crews. Now there are actually five playable factions in game that you can join and play as, as of current. There is Whitecrest, Nova Balresca, Nassau, Halengard, and Blackwind Pirates. There are a few other factions in the game that are not playable, three of which we know of, which is Birkland, Pershovia, and in Yola, Berkland is basically the cool monarchy faction, unlike Whitecrest. There's Pershovia, the technologically advanced faction with all the big ironclads. And finally, there's in Yola, which is basically China, but it's an empire instead of a republic. All right, so now that you know how the game works and it's outlining factors, let's go ahead and show how it applies to each and every one of the requirements Google has provided us, except for religion, of course, because yeah, no, we're just not gonna worry about that. We're gonna start from the top and move down with food supply. And to be honest, food supply really can be covered easily, but we're gonna go ahead and also kind of bend this rule just a tad. Technically, we don't have to though, as the game does provide consumables and all that stuff, but I don't really feel like that's a good way to fulfill this requirement. So we're gonna make this into the economy requirement, as in the game has to have an economy where people can purchase things such as, well, food. 
and that happens quite substantially in this game. And no, this is not like one of those adopt me or pet simulator economies. This is very, very, very different. It's funny because Tradelands is literally named after the word trade, and to be honest, this isn't even the same type of trading as the game originally intended, which was purely to trade cargo. You see, players can trade just about any item they want to using the game's built-in trade system. This trade system is very effective, prevents scams usually, and makes a lot of things possible in the game. For example, if you would like to sell a bunch of your resources, Go ahead and advertise it and you can make money off of it. There's two main ways that you can advertise. You can advertise both in game and online. If you want to trade in game, then you can actually build yourself a shop where you can set up all the items you wish to sell to other people. And if you want to sell online, use the game's official discord where it has a trading channel where you can advertise your items there. It's really kind of cool that you can sell stuff both in person and online. Uh, in person in, in game it's it's pra practically the same thing obviously you know i just I, in person sounds cooler okay it, it, it's just part of the script just go with it now the economy is more advanced than just having two different ways to sell things in fact the economy is highly variable and includes things like inflation deflation rare items i mean it list goes on uh, there are a ton of premium items in the store that can only be purchased via robux um, a little, little way for the devs to make a little money there is uh you know sell those premium items that nobody can get without robux unless you want to sell them which you can you can totally sell i'm pretty sure just about any premium item and uh, make a lot of money off of it so it's a big way for the devs to make money and a big way for players that have some robux to make money and yeah it's a little pay to win i'm not gonna lie but hey everyone can technically get the items through trade so keep that in mind now say you want to not actually use the ship trading feature with cargo and you just want to sell materials you can do that i'm not even kidding if you want to go and just grind materials you can totally do that now there is a limit cap in terms of the amount of materials you can collect per week but even with this limit cap you can really make a lot of money per week let's take this a step further even companies exist in this economy for example shipbuilding companies or cargo trading companies or just resource collection companies all of these different companies are different ways for players to make considerable profit so as you can see the economy is one of the most evolved economies i've ever seen on a roblox game or really most games in general hopefully this can apply to our food requirement and I know it isn't a direct representation of food supply, but it feels like a really important part of any civilization. So I've gone on ahead and included it here in our list. Now the social structure and government of trade lands or really governments of trade lands is where trade lands really becomes unique. Every faction in the game, excluding Halengard, has its own governing body at the moment. Halengard sadly was disbanded and its leaders left for increased opportunity or something like that. I don't know. I don't keep up with them anymore. But basically speaking, Halengard's been taken over by Nova Balresca and they have no government. So yeah, it's, it's, it's a bit sad for them. Other factions in the game have their own governments that vary considerably with different leadership positions and sub roles. For example, Nassal and Nova Balresca elect their own leaders, having both a chancellor for Nova Balresca and a governor for Nassal. However, the King of Whitecrest is an entirely different leader altogether, and he gets to choose who his successor is. Additionally, the Blackwind Pirates have their own battle royale where all of their official pirate crews go and compete against one another to determine who the true leader of the pirate faction is. The team that wins gets their captain into the pirate king or queen role. Halengard used to actually have a similar system where players would compete to decide what their rank was, but of, of course Halengard's dead, so yeah. And Yola is an empire that's ruled by an emperor, and Birkeland is another monarchy, as I said earlier. 
We really don't know what Pershovia's government is, but a hint does come from its official title, which is the Pershovian Federation. Considering all of this, I'm pretty sure we can go ahead and check off the system of government requirement, since we have like literally what, seven systems of government or something? Factions also have navies, and this is where the social structure requirement is fulfilled. For you see, if you want to get more involved in the game's community, it's a good idea to get involved in a navy at some point. Navy members can participate in navy activities that allows them to improve their gameplay skills, have fun with their fellow crewmates and improve their rank, possibly allowing them to lead in other activities. The Blackwind Pirates, however, are the one playable faction that does not in fact have a navy. They are a pirate crew faction, so pirate crews are the only naval units that the faction actually has. These crews are very independent of one another and rarely work together usually only being somewhat led by the pirate king or queen. They probably have their own sub ranks within Fight. these crews, but that is also most likely highly variable and I've never been in a pirate crew personally, so I really don't know whether or not this is true. So this is a significant part of our social structure. The other part includes the wealthy upper class, the simple middle class and uh, whatever this is. And let's not even mention the Tradelands Discord is part of our social structure. I mean, it's social chaos, but it's social structure nonetheless. Meeting yet another of our requirements. Highly developed culture is not an easy task. It requires more than just social classes. It also depends on cultural events and activities, something that Tradelands has a lot of. But these activities can be a lot more deadly than you may originally think. Factions have their own navies with crews and players, of course, but some of these players are lucky enough to actually get involved in roleplay events. These events usually consist of massive navy battles where faction leaders have disagreements that result in death and destruction. However, this activity is very entertaining and so it is really, in a way, a good culture of activity for the community. However, again, players can be killed and or captured. However, war isn't even the only culture activity that occurs in this community. One other example of community activities is the Berkland Games, which is practically an Olympics for all of the playable factions in the game. Players compete in varying competitions like mortar battles or starter ship battles or even chess matches. And this is only a few of the examples. There are other events that can occur too, uh, some of which like Navy skirmishes are outside of the game's lore, but they still contribute to the overall culture of Tradelands, letting us check off yet another requirement. Now these final two requirements are pretty simple, so I'll only cover them for a quick moment. Advancing technology in Tradelands comes from its updates. Developers will add additional functionality to the game or new items like weapons, forts, even ships. These changes in gameplay make it so that players have to improve their own skills and knowledge to keep up with the evolving gameplay. This is, in a way, advancing technology, once again fulfilling another role. Finally, written language is kind of funny, it's just English. Players can play the game in other languages, but all roleplay and community activities are conducted using the English language. And again, religion, not gonna apply here, uh, unless you wanna count Flippy's death cult. Don't ask me about that, I, I, I don't know. So as you can see, we have fulfilled all of the requirements and have reached civilization status. 
Vir virtually, of course. Most games cannot meet all of these requirements, and I have yet to actually see another one that does so. So if you know of a game that fulfills all seven or six of these requirements, really, let me know down in the comments below, and I will be sure to check it out, because I would be very interested to hear about another game that does this. However, that is all I have for now in this video. For more content from me, make sure to hit that subscribe button down below, but that's your choice, not mine. Thank you so much for watching, have a good day everybody, and I will see you all in the next video. Goodbye, everybody.